In June 1876, a band of Sioux and Cheyenne Indians, led by Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse, defied federal orders to return to their reservations. Several hundred U.S. Army troops, led by Lieutenant Colonel George Custer, were sent in. They were quickly overwhelmed and killed by up to 3,000 Indian warriors. Custer's last stand is marked today at the Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument in Montana. When we were in the neighborhood, we got a tour from local historian Putt Thompson. The government is coming out here to enforce a police order that would force these tribes back to the Great Sioux Indian Reservation established by the Treaty of 1876. And, uh, you know, these, these uh, Sioux, Cheyenne, Arapaho said, uh, we're not going back. Tell the general to come, we won't run this time. So the fight was on. And this is where it ended <laughs> essentially this? here. The archeological evidence pretty much pointed to uh, almost a run for your life situation. And the far end of the battlefield, what we call Cal Calhoun Ridge, um, according to the burial party that would uh, scour this land, they said that uh, that was the only organized resistance was at that far end of the battlefield and then everything else was a uh, mixture of officers and companies and across the entire battlefield. Soldiers came on horseback and maybe some on foot and just marched or came into this area. This uh, Custer's uh, 600 and so men, uh, they, they were all mounted. Did they think they were coming here to round up the Indians and take them somewhere? No. At that time, the, the military would uh, attack the village and they would burn the lodges, destroy the food catches, kill the ponies, and cripple these people, these um, hostiles, as they were called, to go back to the reservation and be forced to uh, um, come under the government. Did the Indians have guns? Oh yes, they had better weapons. Uh, most historians will say they had better weapons than the military because, and, and we even know that there were gun runners, you know, supplying these to the Indians and they were good repeating rifles, Henry's. In fact, right over this ridge, Right back over here, um, they called it Henryville. There were so many Henry cartridges found there from those repeating weapons. And so from the very first shots fired would have been down at the Reno battlefield and they would have heard that rapid fire. So the psychology of that starts to turn, you know. And uh, yeah, dis definitely a disadvantage. They, the military was armed with the approved rifle at that time, a single shot. Let me ask you philosophically, who's seen as the good guys and who's seen as the bad guys? I, I think most historians would tell you through history that has uh, come full circle back to Custer is the bad guy. And yet uh, his orders were to do exactly what he was doing. And yet, uh, you know, both parties could suffer the effects of that, uh, you know, condemnation. What does Custer's last stand refer to? Well, this was his last battle, and uh, he's usually pictured standing, you know, as if this is <laughs> this is the last time I'm going to stand. And you know, some. Indian stories have him actually shot at the river before the battle started. So that, that, uh, that histor historical analysis is not quite accurate necessarily. He might have been shot at the river and disabled right there before it actually got going. This is sort of symbolic, um, this gravesite area standing for where some people were found. Right. The soldiers. Yes. It merely marks where men were found. And like I say, most are somewhat accurate, but uh, Custer was found closest to the top of the hill. So as you can see, they moved these off to make way for the mass grave. And, but they say 42 officers and men were found here. So some of these uh, have been brought inside the fence to um, have the visitors understand how many were, were found killed here. 
What does this show? Uh, this monument was placed here for over 200 men that were killed with the um, with General Custer, Lieutenant General, and it is in a mass grave. The grave um, below this contains the remains of almost all of those. Uh, some officers, including Custer, were buried elsewhere. I would describe it as a, it's a it's a somber place, um, full of spirits. And the best lesson would be that history will not repeat itself. Custer was 36 when he was killed. Around 30 Indians were said to have died in the battle.